Good evening everyone and welcome to Monday Night Live and uh, of course we're doing it tonight which is Wednesday night here in Australia uh, due to rescheduling issues. So I was traveling home the other night and I was still on the road uh, on the way home from the Gold Coast and so I was unable to oh, and I wasn't in any kind of service area so we rescheduled for tonight and uh, we are actually going to move Monday Night Live to Wednesday nights in the near future once we make the time adjustment from 8 o'clock uh, 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which we made the show later because we had so much light here due to daylight savings. So people were still outside with their horses and that sort of thing. So we adjusted the time to 8 p.m. So as we head into winter, we will be bringing the um, we will be bringing the time slot back to 7 p.m. And at this point in time, I am generally traveling on Fridays and Mondays or teaching on Friday on uh, over the weekend and Mondays. So it's looking like Wednesday is going to be the better option. So it looks like we will be moving it, but there will be big announcements all over Facebook. Hey, Bear, thanks for tuning in. And so you will get notified as soon as we make that decision, which I uh, anticipate will be in the next couple of weeks. So look out for those notifications and Monday Night Live will be moving to Wednesdays and renamed aptly as Wednesday Night Live. So tonight you're joining me for, and I'm Tanya from Tanya Krause Horsemanship, for those of you who don't know me. And uh, tonight you're joining me. Hey, Leah, thanks for tuning in. Hey, Tracy. Yeah, it is a good idea, I think. Um, tonight you're tuning in for Strength and Suppling. And as usual, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach to uh, this topic Hi Claudette, thanks for tuning in. Hi Amanda. I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach to this topic. I really feel like Monday's uh, Monday Night Lives or I really feel like the show is a uh, very much a conversational approach and I don't think that it is a... Um, I don't think the show is a place to sort of share training um, ideas or things like that because I prefer to share training ideas with you guys in terms of exercises and things like that. I mean, obviously we're talking about training and philosophy and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I feel like, my, uh, you know, the show's a real um, roundtable discussion type of a thing. And uh, and so I reserve the training for obviously the clinics and the um, training videos that are uploaded to our YouTube channel all the time. So you'll be able to see that um, actual me demonstrating um, horse stuff on in those two areas. So tonight we're talking about strength and suppling. And uh, initially I was going to make the show or this topic, I was going to talk about strength and suppling and how it applies to our horses. And uh, once I sat down and started writing about this topic and really delving into it, I realized that um, the more that we talk about this uh, kind of stuff, I realized that we really need to start always taking us into consideration, the, the humans and the horses, because we both make up that partnership. And I think we really need to, I think a lot of you guys that are tuning in are looking for that little bit extra to, to um, get from that relationship. I think you're, you're looking to take it to the next level or whatever words you want to use to describe that. I think we're all looking um, to be better in that, in that relationship and be better in that, uh, in our horsemanship skills. And I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there in regards to technique and exercises and that sort of thing. And so I think really to take it to the next level that what we're looking at is, um, is you know what we're bringing to the table for our horses and what we're um, and what our expectation of them. So as uh, I talk about this topic tonight, strength and suppling, the first thing that I want to talk about is um, what it means for us as the human and what we're bringing to the table as part of that partnership. So um, I really, um, you guys who watch this all the time know that I break everything down. I'm very methodical in the way that I um, I approach each individual subject and tonight's no different. So the three areas that we're going to be looking at in regards to strength and suppling are uh, the two areas are us and the horse and then the three areas within each of those 
uh, the mind, the body, and the spirit. Because I think that we can look at strength and suppling in a multitude of different ways. And so uh, what I want to share with you tonight is how I've kind of, um, you know, what my thoughts are in regards to those three things, in regards to those areas in those three areas of our lives. So um, when we're talking about strength of mind, when it comes to the human, I think it all comes down to knowledge is power. And being consistent in our approach to our horses, making a um, clear, conscious decision about the approach that we're taking, the methodology that we're using or the philosophy that we're applying when we're, when we're um, training or teaching or trying to uh, do something with our horses. Hey, mom. Um, I think we really need to remain consistent in that. And, um, and that's the strength of our mind, knowing that we're doing something in a certain way and we're not going to waver from that, that approach, if you like. I'm not saying um, uh, to be unwavering in, in our uh, technique necessarily, because if you find a better way uh, with regards to your technique, then sure, if it makes sense to you, then do a different way in regards to technique. But I'm talking about applying a philosophy. So if you're applying a philosophy where your approach is that you know horses learn on release, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna um, apply pressure and then release pressure. Uh, so you know um, and use that method to teach my horse. I need to I need to apply that across all areas, and I need to be consistent in that. So you know your strength of mind is making a decision or, or being conscious about the way that you're approaching your horse and how you're teaching your horse. Um, unwavering from that decision you've made unless there's a reason to change it and then changing it across the board in all there's no point in teaching my horse how to um, side pass using negative reinforcement and then I teach my horse how to back up using positive punishment and then teach my horse how to um, you know go forwards using um, uh, positive reinforcement there's no no um, there's no consistency in using a different methodology or a different approach in everything that we're teaching. So having clarity in regards to that and remaining consistent in regards to our approach and what it is that we're doing with our horses. Uh, I think having clarity in in regards to our plan of the day um, and what it is that we're actually seeking, what what we're wanting to achieve. And uh, I had experiences today. I got to ride Cooper um, out out in the bush today. And what I really wanted to get from my ride with him today was I really wanted to get um, uh, be very conscious of any brace that was coming from me or coming from him. And I really wanted to get into the rhythm of. Um, us as a unit and so I, I that was my focus for the entire ride was rhythm and making sure that there was no brace in my body and things like that so I was very clear in my mind that I wasn't working on collection I wasn't working on accuracy I wasn't working on any of these other things what I really wanted was the dance I wanted the rhythm I wanted that that us to be together and and uh, and be working together um, not against each other so with Galliano today I was doing some filming and, and that sort of thing with her uh, for the channel and my number one focus with regards to Galliano is always um, preserving her mind. She's she's uh, very can be very highly strung horse. She's a very willing horse. She can be very reactive because she hasn't um, spent enough time with me yet to not be reactive. So it's still all very new, even though I've had her for a couple of years now. She spent a lot of time um, being turned out and just being a horse and that sort of thing. So she kind of gets pulled in for a few weeks here and then gets sent out again and then pulled in and gets sent out again. And so what I'm very aware of with Galliano is preserving her mind and preserving her confidence. So that was my strength of mind today is making that decision, knowing what I wanted um, out of my uh, out of Cooper and I's time together and knowing what I wanted out of Galliano and I's time together and making sure that I was releasing at the correct time and applying the timing and all of that and applying the reward when those things were occurring. 
irrespective of what else was going on. You know, as I said, I was filming with Galliano today. So there's obviously particular things that you want the horse to achieve because, you know, I'm, I'm doing this segment for YouTube and I want you to go around this barrel or I want you to go around this cone. But my number one focus was her, her soundness and her confidence in her mind. So n your strength of mind is all about knowledge being power. It's all about having clarity about what you're doing and, um, and what you're trying to achieve out of each session. Suppleness of our mind, uh, for me, is our ability to approach our challenges with a range of solutions. So um, it, it's about having flexibility. So I, I, I knew broadly today what I wanted or I knew what my focus was. Um, my focus was all about, uh, you know, finding the dance with Cooper. And so when I did find Brace or he did get worried about something because we went out on a big long trail ride, when he did get worried about something, I was all about how I could, um, you know, be flexible in my mind. That's my suppleness is my flexibility and my ability to change within a situation without getting frustrated, without um, just trying to apply the same thing over and over again when clearly it's not working. So your suppleness in your mind is all about your flexibility and your ability to apply different solutions to the same challenges um, and, and trying to find the one that works the best, I guess. Um, then we talk about our body, so our physical, um, our physical strength when it comes to our body. And I think that it's something that we don't consider a lot of when we're working with our horses um, because we see strength as being a negative thing or physical strength being a negative thing. And I certainly don't want to approach my horses with a physical strength, um, you know, when I'm putting feel into the lead or when I'm riding them or things like that. I don't want to apply my cues or my aids with a physical strength. But what I think we need to be aware of in regards to physical strength um, is that it adds ease to your movements. So, um, you know, I have done different types of training, physical training. Um, a lot of you who know us know that Phil owns a martial arts school. So I spent a bit of time there and, and did classes and did training and things like that uh, quite a few years ago. So I've gone through different periods in my life where I have been uh, at different levels of fitness. So I, I have been, you know, quite fit before and then I've been not as fit before and things like that. And when you're physically fit or physically strong, um, it, it, it adds an ease to your movements. It adds, it adds an ease to, it, it removes struggle, I like to say. Um, you know, I always say to people, and it sounds really funny um, when you put it in, in this kind of context, but I always say to people, you know, even when I'm fit, getting in and out of the car is easier when I'm fit than when I'm not fit. And that's just because you're having to sort of, you know, stand on one leg and, and jump up into the driver's seat, um, you know, into the cab and, and that kind of stuff. And, and so that's the kind of thing that I mean in regards to physical fitness or physical strength. It's not about having physical strength so you can manhandle your horse, but it's about having physical strength so you can, um, uh, you know, stabilize and control your own movements and apply your own movements um, with ease instead of with a, with a struggle. Suppleness in our body, so, so we're talking about strength and suppleness. Suppleness in our bodies allows us to, I think, match our horse's um, flexibility and movements a lot easier and it allows us to um, feel the horse moving under underneath us without having that brace if all if all of us went out to the gym and started training um, you know weight training and developed a, a real strength in our bodies we would experience some some benefits from that in regards to training our horses but there may be a rigidness that may come into our bodies so Training flexibility and suppleness as well gives us the benefit of um, being able to be strong but moving with with motion. And you know our horses have motion 
constantly, when it, whether they're walking, trotting or cannery, there's always um, motion in the body, um, obviously, as, as we see it through the legs moving and the head moving. But what we don't um, consciously realize sometimes is, is where the horse's spine is and how the horse is swinging and moving his, his spine during the movements. So developing our suppleness and our ability to go with that rhythm and go with that movement adds um, freedom to the movement and removes brace from the movement, which I think um, is, is, you know, that next level kind of stuff that we're talking about. Uh, the final category is, um, or, you know, the final area that we're going to have a look at is our spirit. So mind, body, and spirit. So for us humans with regard, and then we're going to talk about the horses. So for us humans, um, to me, my interpretation of strength of our spirit means our ability to not let the ego take things personally or blame the horse when we're experiencing challenges. Um, I've had an incredible amount of feedback from the newsletter that went out this morning um, talking about are you pushing back and, and talking about the ego. And I've had so many people send me messages or comment on the post or send me private emails just saying, um, you know, I'm guilty of this and I hadn't acknowledged it, I hadn't been conscious of it because, um, you know, our ego is something that uh, it, it does push back on things and it does take things personally. So, you know, we're riding down the road and our horse shies at something and immediately our ego wants to, you know, jump on that and tell the horse he's being an idiot and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and, and if we step away from that and don't take the situation personally, we, I think we recognize that the horse is probably just as concerned in that moment as we are. Our horses don't want to be frightened of things. Um, they, they, they are instinctive animals that are just um, responding to you know what's happening around them and they're responding to what's happening in the moment. So uh, I think that... Um, uh, you know, managing our own spirit and managing our ego and making sure that we're not pushing back on things and we're not being reactive to things, uh, that it helps us, um, uh, it helps us have a, have an inner strength during those challenging times. And that inner strength helps us help the horse in the best way possible during those times, instead of us getting angry or frustrated or scared or, or things like that. So I think that to me is our strength of spirit that I'm talking about. Our suppleness of our spirit is our ability to remain kind and happy in our interactions with our horses. So exactly that what I was just talking about, not only is strength of spirit our ability to remove the ego and respond to a situation as it is, but our suppleness in our spirit is about us being able to... Um, respond kindly in those situations even in the face of adversity even in the face of fear even in the face of uh, danger even in the face of uh, whatever it is that we're experiencing I think that a suppleness in our spirit allows us to just be present respond to the horse and support the horse in whatever way uh, we can in order to make sure that we're both getting through a situation um, uh, you know, safely. And even if we're talking about things that aren't challenging, even if we're just talking about day-to-day -day training and, you know, maybe we're out there trying to, you know, ride a pirouette or something like that, um, I think that suppleness in our spirit allows us to just um, be present and be conscious and just and just ride the movement. Uh, you know, we did a bit of stuff over the weekend at Cedar Grove, and uh, and one of the exercises that we did was was a walk pirouette. And uh, you know, we broke it right down. And I had people there that hadn't ridden that on, and, and their horses hadn't ridden a walk pirouette before. And I kind of broke it down verbally, and I said, you know, we're going to do this and this and this. And um, there was a lot of there was a lot of brace coming from the people. There was a lot of brace against it because they were like, I don't know how to ride a pirouette. I'm not going to be able to do it. And I kind of said, go and and break it down the way that we've spoken about. But um, trust your body. Trust yourself that you know. Uh, where the horses, as long as you know where the horse's body is supposed to be, your body will step up to the plate and ask the horse to be where he needs to be. And as soon as we did that, the tension and the brace and things like that melted away. And those those people and those horses were dance partners for a moment. Those people and those horses actually 
joined together and were able to do these um, exercises that we were doing that looked beautiful because we weren't trying to force it. We weren't riding the movement for the movement's sake. We were just talking to the horse's body and, and putting our body where it needed to be. Um, I think it's important to note here that these things need to be practiced to become who we are. Um, a lot of people will say, you know, a leopard can't change their spots or, you know, we're born in a certain personality or we're born um, responding to certain situations uh, the, the way that we are. And that's true to a degree. But I believe that if we practice um, it, you know, if we practice kindness and we practice recognizing or having a consciousness about when our ego is stepping in and, and when things are, um, you know, we're finding things challenging and recognizing how we're behaving in those challenging moments, I think that we're able to retrain our brain to, to have a different approach in that situation. It's just like exercise. It's just like um, you know, stretching, it's just like any other thing. If you don't use it, you lose it. Or if you don't develop the skill, you don't have the skill. It's not just something that comes innately. Yes, it comes um, naturally to some people more than it comes to others. And everybody's got their own strengths in different areas. And I think it's about consciously developing those strengths and uh, and recognizing how we can improve in those areas or how we can practice those kind of things. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is the horse. So we're talking about strength and we're talking about suppleness and now we're talking about the horse's, um, what he's bringing to the table in regards to strength and suppleness and we're talking about the horse's mind, body and spirit. So we're going to break it down into those three areas and really have a look at um, those three areas and what we're talking about in regards to strength and suppleness across those three areas. So when it comes to your horse's mind, I, I, I believe that your horse's strength of mind is about preserving his mind and preserving his confidence. I meet a lot of horses that have been um, either shut down or blown up or that are nervous or anxious or worried or um, they simply resist when something is presented to them in a certain way. And um, I really feel like if you have a horse like that or you know a horse like that that is anxious or that is nervous or that just pushes back or just resists when something's presented to them or gets worried when something new is presented to them, um, I consider that that the mind, their mind has been compromised in some way. I think that in all of our work, our number one focus should be preserving the horse's mind. And what I mean by that is preserving his confidence and preserving his calmness in his approach to all situations. Horses are very, very easy to educate and they're very easy to communicate with and they're very easy to talk to, providing that we can keep them calm and confident across all situations. And it's normally in a, uh, in a situation where they are not calm and they're not confident that things backfire and, and we run into trouble. So preservation of the horse's mind is, uh, is something that, uh, and strengthening the horse's mind um, by doing that, by, by causing him to be confident, is, is how we're going to maintain our horse's calmness and approach to all of the situations that we present him with. Uh, the suppleness of the horse's mind is about teaching him to be a, a thinking horse. I don't want my horse to be a robot. I don't want him to um, go through the motions. I think that we lose beauty in, um, in any actions that we're doing with our horses or the riding that we're doing. I think we lose a lot of the magic, if you like, or um, what probably initially drew us to horses in the first time, uh, in the first place, that... Um, you know, that magic or their their nobility and all those um, wonderful traits that horses have, um, I think we lose that by shutting them down and causing them to just be robots who just 
do what we're telling them and, and uh, you know, they just put their head down and bum up and operate. And I'm certainly not saying, you know, go out there and let your horse do whatever he wants and have a horse that's disrespectful and therefore dangerous. But what I'm saying is that suppleness of the horse's mind is about teaching him how to be a thinking horse and teaching him how to be a problem solver. Um, a thinking horse will remain calm in his approach to work or challenges and it, it simplifies our interactions with them. When you've got a thinking horse, um, it really makes life a lot easier in your approach and when you're trying to um, teach them something new or you're trying to present something different to them. If you've got a horse that's a thinker and a bit of a problem solver, they're actually actively interested and actively curious about what it is that you're trying to achieve um, in Instead of just looking for that, um, you know, that movement that we're, but that, that they think they need to do in order to get rid of us. Uh, so the next thing is your horse's body. So we're talking about strengthening the horse's body, and I think it's important that we invest in our horses. Um, strength and developing our horse's strength for the work that we ask him to do. I meet a lot of horses that might may be ridden, um, you know, once per week or or not even that often. And what I see is horses pulled out of the paddock, and uh, and and owners asking horses to perform particular maneuvers or maybe per collective work or even just simply a long trail ride or going for a ride down the beach. And we haven't. Um, we haven't kept them fit enough to be able to um, do that work without getting sore. And so we begin to develop an association in our horse's mind of pain and discomfort, which is associated with the riding, which is ultimately um, associated with me. If you asked me to go for a run tomorrow and uh, you just knocked on my door tomorrow morning and said, okay, Tanya, we're going to go for a five kilometer run. Um, I probably could do it, um, you know, I probably could physically find it somewhere, but I would, I would be very, very sore for three or four days after that because I haven't been training, I'm not fit enough to do it. And yet with our horses, we don't really consider, um, you know, what is it that I'm going to present to my horse this weekend? What is it that I'm going to ask him to do with regards to his riding? And am I maintaining a level of fitness in the horse uh, for him to be able to uh, not only perform those actions and, and maintain his own um, uh, ability to not get injured or not strain anything, but am I also helping him be prepared in such a way that's making sure that he's not sore after we ride or reducing soreness as much as I possibly can? Uh, suppleness, again, we spoke a little bit in regards to the human side of thing. It's the same thing. Increasing your horse's flexibility will help his ease of movement. It will reduce potential injuries. It will contribute to his ability to perform quality movements. Movements without flexibility will be braced and therefore they'll be incorrect and therefore they'll be non-beneficial to the development of his um, muscles and the development of his body in a positive way. And um, movements or riding our horses when they're not flexible and they're not moving, you come up with blockages and blockages create, um, you know, muscle tears or muscle um, bulges and things like that. You start to really affect the horse's body when he isn't, um, when you're not maintaining a level of flexibility during the horse. So when you are asking him to perform things that he's, he's, performing them in such a way that's, that's um, developing his body in a beneficial, positive way. And then we it brings us to the spirit of the horse. So when I talk about strengthening the spirit of the horse, um, I what I mean by that is continually setting him up for success and to be correct. And he'll feel good about his work if he feels like he's making progress. So what I mean by that is... Um, not presenting our horse with something um, challenging with the idea that we are going to make him wrong. Uh, I hear people sometimes say something like, um, oh, he thinks I want him to turn right, so I'm going to turn left. And so what we've done there is we've done something on a, on a continual repetition. So the horse starts anticipating that we're about to go right. 
um, you know, it makes sense to me. And then we say, oh, no, we're going to turn turn you left. And, and, and we kind of line him up for failure. And, uh, you know, that's an egotistical thing that makes us do things like that. Um, we say that it's to stop the horse anticipating, which we see as a negative thing. But most humans will um, learn via anticipation. Any animal's going to learn via anticipation. You know, I pull up in the driveway and my dogs know what time it is and they'll, you know, they'll come out wagging their tails or at six o'clock when I feed them, they'll, you know, they, they, or they might hear the feed bag or something. There's nothing wrong with anticipation. All animals are going to learn via anticipation. So um, strengthening your horse's spirit is making sure that you are setting him up for success and making sure you're presenting things to him where he can be right and you can reward him for being right instead of setting him up to fail because setting him up to fail is not going to help him learn and it's not going to motivate him to want to come out and learn with you. Suppleness of spirit in in my interpretation is not punishing your horse for changes in his feel. Um, so I said to Phil today, I was going out riding with Phil and uh, I walked out into the paddock and, uh, and you know, our horses are separate. So Phil rode down to the paddock to meet me and I had saddled Cooper up and I was lunging him away and, uh, and Phil rode up and he said, oh, he's, he's got a bit of a hump in him today. You know, he's a bit fresh because he hadn't been ridden for three or four days and you could see him on the circle kind of, you know, pushing up under the saddle and being a little humpy. And so what I mean by um, being supple or, or promoting a suppleness in your horse's spirit is understanding that he is going to be flexible and not telling him he's wrong for that. Um, you know, it can be really intimidating when our horses feel fresh or they're a little bit up. And, uh, and certainly, uh, you know, Cooper's no different. He's a very big horse. And uh, I really felt him grow today. I really felt him big today. And um, I, I had to make sure that I wasn't going to tell him that he's wrong because I ultimately want that power. I ultimately want to be able to harness that power, power and use that power and and um, feel that power in in our work together. And, uh, and I can't, if I allow that power to scare me, and worse, allow it to scare me to the point where I tell him he's wrong for feeling that way, then what I'm trying to do is just create, again, I'm just trying to remove the horse's spirit and uh, and create a robot out of him. I'm trying to make him um, be the same every day and I don't want you to be affected by external influences and I don't want you to feel that good and I don't want you to feel that flat. Um, you know, by the same token, we go out to the horses and they might be a little flat and we go, oh, you're a bit flat today. I don't like that. And then we go get him the next day and he's fresh and we go, oh, you're a bit fresh. I don't like that. And we try and remove the horse's spirit or the, the suppleness in his spirit by, by only liking one particular part of it. So I think what, what we need to do is learn how to work with it and understand, um, you know, I did a few circles on Cooper and, and, uh, and, and I went to get on and I said, he's fine. He's ready to go. You know, I, I know the horse. I know what I need to do to get him ready to get on. Uh, and all was well. So um, it was it was a really nice ride. And uh, I like that about my horses is that um, they do have that they do have that spirit and they are able to show me, you know, how they're feeling and things like that without me getting, um, you know, feeling like I need to correct that, if you like. Um, I think that we've got to be careful in wanting to control every single um, part of the situation. So when it comes to strength and suppling, and I'll probably write an um, article about it, and I am definitely planning a series of training videos in regards to strength and suppling, um, and you'll see exercises and things like that in regards to physically strengthening the horse's body uh, and certainly some exercises in regards to what we've spoken about tonight. So, um, you know, strength and suppling, it's about us, it's about the horse, and it's about mind, body, and spirit across both of those entities. So having an awareness of these things allows us to be conscious. Um, it allows us to be conscious of what we are doing with our horses and what we are um, bringing to the table. Table. So I hope that you enjoyed tonight's Monday Night Live on Wednesday night and uh, keep an ear to the ground. You will get notified. Um, it'll be on the newsletter. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be everywhere um, when we're changing. We are going to change Mondays to um, Wednesdays. 
um, and we are going to change the. We will bring the time slot back to 7 p.m. now that we're losing light here in in Australia. Uh, so I hope everyone enjoyed that. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them down there. Um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in every week. Uh, it's really cool to see all the. Uh, little icons popping up and people saying hello. Hey, Beck. Um, it's really nice when you all join in and and uh, and and talk and things like that. So feel free to share your stories. I uh, hope you're all having a great week with your horses. Uh, I'm looking forward. Thanks, Bethany. Thanks, Beth. Um, I'm really looking forward to heading. I'm heading to. Um, uh, the Bowker lectures this weekend. So anyone going to the Bowker lectures, I look forward to seeing you down there. Please let me know if you're going to be there, and um, we can we can organise to catch up. Uh, looking forward to the weekend. It's going to be a great one. Um, three days of classroom learning, all about our horses and their bodies and all that sort of stuff. Um, I, it's it's right up my alley. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, Abby. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. It's been so long. Hope everything's been going. I actually thought that you might have been going, Abby, but by, by that, oh, lucky you. Sounds like oh, It sounds like you're not going either. Uh, so I hope to catch up with you, all of you guys soon. Have a great rest of the week, and, uh, and I will talk to you soon.